All right, guys, how you doing? It's your beer. I hope you're all good. So years ago, maybe three or four years ago, I did a video called How to Use Compressor Pedals, where I was using the Keeley Compressor Plus. And that, that video, the purpose of that was to shed a bit of light on how to use a compressor. Some people get it, some people didn't. It's actually one of my most viewed videos, which is pretty cool. In any case, the reason I bring this up is because in this video, I wanted to shed a little bit of light on my favorite uses for compression. But on top of that, I wanted to take this opportunity to show you guys a new compressor from Keeley Electronics. If any of you are a fan of Robert Keeley or Keeley Electronics and you know about the company, then you would know that this month, being September 2021, marks 20 years of Keeley Electronics, which is amazing. Or at least it's 20 years anniversary of Keeley being known in the guitar industry, modding pedals, creating different pedals and doing all that kind of stuff. So a huge congratulations to Robert and his team. Uh, that's really, really cool. 20 years is a long time to be killing it in the game and you're doing just that. So. My sincere congratulations to you. So the pedal I'm talking about in this video is the brand new Keeley Compressor Mini. As you can see, it's this tiny, tiny little two knob compressor pedal. It's so small. If you've got a TC Electronic Mimic, it's the same footprint as that. It's tiny little, all the Tone City pedals, it's, it's so small. Some pedals have attack, release times, ratio, threshold, all this kind of stuff that for most people, it's gonna be like, oh my God, that's too complicated. I don't know what they're on about. I don't know how to use this pedal. It's just annoying me. I'm not gonna bother. But you don't wanna be like that. You don't wanna miss out on the beauty of compression, especially not when you're using it in certain guitar tones, which I'm gonna show you in this video. So what's the idea with the Compressor Mini? Well, essentially it's their simplest but most effective compressor that they've made. They've done all the maths and all the hard thinking for you under the hood of this pedal. So you can just turn up the level, turn up the compression and you get a nice quality of sound and a nice sounding compression. I'm just gonna read you a little bit of info off the leaflet that came with the pedal just so you can have an idea of what they're aiming for here. But the next generation of Keeley Compression is finally here. The all new Keeley Compressor Mini is designed to make the magic of compression simple and easy to use. Featuring an automatic Manhattan style compression that articulates a transparent blend of your dynamic guitar signal. The Keeley Mini is now the best compressor for small guitar effects pedal boards. The Keeley Mini compressor retains all of the subtlety and dynamics in your playing while making it easier to play. But anyway, I've talked enough about a two knob pedal. We're gonna just put it on the board, I'm gonna play it with a Strat, and I'm gonna show you the, the, a few different applications for compression that I've come to use over the years. Just to say guys, this is a sponsored video. Keeley have sent the Keeley Compressor Mini over for me to check out, and usually I'd do like a gear demo, take you through it, but with it being such a simple pedal, I wanted to sort of give you guys a different example of how I'd use the compressor within my rig and all that kind of stuff. So yes, this is a sponsored video. I'll leave my opinions to the end, but I just wanted to let you guys know. Okay, so I've got my guitar. Let me give you the rig real quick. Running into this pedal board, we've got the UA effects, got the Astro up front, we've got the Starlight and the Golden Reverberate in the loop. Got uh, Origin effects Revival Drive to, so that I can give you a demonstration of how to use that with compression and the microcosms on there because it's fun. I'm running into the Soldano SLO 100, into the Sur Reactive IR, that's going into Logic, and I'm running an instance of the Soldano SLO 100 plugin just for the cab section from Neural DSP. So that is the rig. As you can see on the pedal board, I've got the Compressor Mini. In terms of where the guitar goes first, it hits the Origin Revival Drive, and then it goes into the Compressor Mini because I wanted to have that compression after the fact. Okay, so let's start by showing you my first application for compression. As you can see, the way I've got the compressor set is that I'm backing off some level and I'm boosting the compression over halfway. That's gonna be a little more bloomy, but it really works when you're running it on like a, on a clean or a push clean like this. So you can hear that it's 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 a nice sound, but it's I guess you'd say there's a little bit of a transient going on. When I say transient, I mean it's a little spiky. As soon as I throw on the compressor. So if you noticed 
there was a big volume jump, but on top of that, because we're running it on a crunch channel or like a look, it's a gain stage, so the harmonic content is there. If we're not driving the amplifier hard enough with the guitar itself, you're not gonna hear that crunch. So just to give you an example again. It's nice, but when you put the compression on, and because I'm boosting the compression, we're bringing those high and low transients together, and it's going to pull up the information, pull it out. So you, that's where you start hearing that crunch. So really, what I'm trying to say here is my first initial use of compression, generally speaking, is I find a crunch channel, I run the crunch lowish, so it's got a glassy cleanness to it, but we're still we have all that harmonic content from the crunch channel. Then I use a compressor to bring it all together, so you get that. So case in point. Basically, I really like using it to just bring out a bit more of the harmonic content within that channel. Like, it's it's more telling on the bridge pickup, so without it, it's very clean, throw on that compression. Which I think really works. It just it, and it makes it easy to play because it's pulling everything together. Now you can accentuate this more by just boosting the level a touch. So hopefully that gets the point across about the first application I like to use with compression. And again, this is really easy, just literally turning the compressor in the level and finding that sweet spot. So that's cool. So the next use of compression for me is blending it with a drive pedal. I put it after the drive pedal. So in this instance, the revival drive. And the reason I do this is gain is essentially compression. It's compression of the signal al al alongside a lot of other stuff, but compression is a big part of it, you know. That's why it's easy to play with more gain, because everything is just so compressed. Everything feels really fluid and nice. So you can take a sound like this drive sound that I've got. <laughs> I like that for crunch. Now, if I wanted to start playing with lead and I wanted a little bit more fluidity, bring it out, make it a bit more bold, add more gain, essentially, I'm going to compress it. So rather than changing the gain and changing the settings of the pedal, I can throw the compressor on top of this and I'll get more sort of gain, compression, might be a bit easier to play, more sustain. So check it out. If I take it off, do a similar kind of thing. You lose a little bit of this body, a bit of this warmth and bloom. What I might do at this point for playing like that is back off the compression. Just a little bit.
can clearly hear how it it, it just kind of works, you know, it just adds something else to the sound that I, I really appreciate. And it's not always necessary. I find it's nice when you're playing on your own, uh, especially when you're playing on your own. Just gives you a little bit more support. Um, this kind of thing can get a little bit messy live where, you know, when we're in a studio environment like this, it sounds really nice and controlled and it's adding more vibe to everything. But that can also be a bit of a nuisance live uh, by adding more gain and more intensity to the sound. So you always want to just manage that. So ride that compression as you see fit. Obviously, one of the most fun things to do with a compressor is just is to gun the compression so you get that natural bloom and then sort of chank on some funk in position four. So this is without it. things easier you know like if I take it away all those little nuances like you hear it but just not as nicely because you know you're really hearing the transients whereas when you throw it on you don't have to do as much but all this stuff You know, you really don't have to play that much and it brings it out. So yeah, that's generally one of the more traditional sense for using compression. That was a little bonus use because I don't really do a lot of that stuff, but um, it's a very obvious way to use a compressor. All right, so now we're on to my kind of third favorite use for compression. Just to recap, my first uh, favorite use would be take a crunch channel, really low gain, and then use a compressor uh, to boost the level and pull the harmonic content closer together so you get a little bit of hair and the glass out of that tone. Because I never really use exclusively clean channels. I tend to clean up a crunch and then boost uh, and compress to get that sort of sound. And it is really enjoyable for that purpose. The second use would be to take something like a drive pedal or if you're using a crunch channel uh, and, then, and then using the compressor to essentially get sort of two channels out of the drive pedal, if that makes sense. The first one being like a crunch, less saturated, less sustained sort of crunch sound. In this instance, the Origin Revival Drive Compact. Then I use the compressor to sort of boost that, but also pull it together. And I put it after the drive, because what it does is it brings everything closer together again in the same way that I do in a, with, with the crunch channel running at low gain. Gives me more support, gives more body to the sound. You hear more of the sizzle at the top end. Generally, it just sounds like a, a gain boost and a nice fat gain boost in a, in a tasteful way. It, it generally tends to work with any drive pedal I've tried it with. So put it afterwards and then find your nice sound with your drive and then get that afterwards. So it, it does work. It sounds really nice. Then my little bonus tip, of course, would just be to gun the compression, go onto position four on a strat or something and play that funky stuff. The cleaner the channel and the amp, the, the closer to that authentic funk chank sound you're going to get. And now we're onto my sort of third and final favorite use for this. So this is where I use a high gain channel. Again, I'm still using the strat, but the idea being here, you take a high gain sound that's really good for rhythm and high gain. So it's not too too much gain, and then you use the compressor to get that extra bit of gain and sustain. It's all similar principles to the other ones, but I'll just show you how it sounds. So this is just the overdrive channel of the Soldano without the compressor on. Just to bear in mind, we've got the reverb and delay in the loop. So it's a nice sounding gain, really, it's got a lot of sizzle, which I really like, but if I want to go and hold notes for a little bit longer,
So I was just kind of playing around a similar kind of thing just to show you audibly what's going on there. As you can hear, you know, we've got loads of gain and the channel is fairly compressed as it is. But using the compressor, you get a more sustain. Uh, it's a little bit easier, like you hear the nuances more. It doesn't give you loads more gain, but it just gives you like a more excited version of the sound that you already heard before. And that's just really useful. Not always do we have to throw on boosts. Sometimes it's literally just a feel thing because sometimes you'll put a boost, you know, usually you should put a boost in, in the loop so that it actually boosts the power section so you become louder. If you put a boost in front of the amp, it's just going to boost level into the input so it's just going to give you more gain, which some people like, you know, but that's the same, you know, you're boosting the signal so you're going to end up with more gain coming to the front. What I like about this is we're not necessarily adding more gain, we're just sort of messing with what's already there to try and give us more out of it, if that makes sense. This could be, all be just random theories of my own, but I feel like that's a really nice way of using compression on high gain. You know, it can get a little messy and it can often induce feedback, you know, especially when you're using a single core guitar and you sat this close to an amp that's currently running at half volume and it's 100 watts, so that's pretty intense. But in any case, it's a really nice use for it. That was with, as you can see, the controls there, the, the compression's more, I've backed off the level because I'm compressing the high gain so much, so I don't want to be adding loads of level, getting getting too much noise, essentially. So, yeah, I, th I think that's a really nice use for it too. All right then, well, that kind of sums up my top three go-to uses for compression. Firstly, I want to talk about the compressor real quick. I love the Keeler compressors. I've used the Keeler Compressor Plus for many years on my pedal board, and it goes without saying that everybody knows the Keeler Compressor does a really, really good job. So the idea of bringing out the Compressor Mini on that 20 year anniversary is a really nice touch and a really, really great pedal, to be fair. It's, it's so simple, and it does the kind of compression effect that I want. It delivers, and this is the first time I've used it. Uh, I just assumed that it would do a similar thing to the Compressor Plus, which it does, but it's much simpler and easier to use, and it's tiny as well, so it takes up no space on your pedal board. So thank you to Keeley for sending me the Compressor Mini to show you guys. Um, but yeah, basically that sums up my, my go-to uses for compression. I love compressing a really low gain crunch channel. I like using it uh, to, I guess, oversaturate a drive pedal, so I put it after the drive pedal, choose my settings where I want them for like my crunch and stuff, and if I want a bit more balls and a bit more girth and sustain out of it, turn the compressor on for that. Putting it in front of a high gain sound, not to get more gain, but to give me more sustain out of the sound and excite the whole sound a little bit more, especially for lead or more intricate riffs and stuff, it's a really handy thing to do. The last thing I wanted to say about compression, just before I end this video, is that you don't want to overuse it. It's too much of a good thing, not necessarily from what people are hearing, but it can make you complacent with your playing because it's the same way when you use a lot of gain. When you use a lot of gain, it's a lot of compression. So you don't have to do very much here or here to get the, the desired effect, which is cool if you're into that, but I, I like to dig in and get, get the guitar and the amp working harder. So if I'm using compression all the time, it's kind of doing a lot of that heavy lifting for me. So I use it as a stylistic tool and one that, you know, some days it really is enjoyable playing with that amount of compression. And other days I'm like, oh, it's way too compressed. I need more air. I need more space between everything. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense, a little bit of insight into what I think about it. Thank you, Keeley Electronics, for sending me the Compressor Mini and a huge congratulations on 20 years. That is, that is outstandingly awesome. So yeah, congrats from me. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Of course, I'll link everything in the description box. But let me know how you use compression and what you think of this video. In any case, like, subscribe and share. I've been Rabir and I'll see you all very soon.